my own journey. So again, Eric, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for bringing the Hawaiian on today. I'm really excited to be here. So my own journey, as you mentioned a little bit, when I was younger about, uh, so my parents got divorced at a very young age. I was between eight to 10 years old. And at 13 years old, I was going through depression. Both my parents are diagnosed with depression. My mom's diagnosed as bipolar. And when my parents split, my dad moved back to Dominican Republic, where he's from. My mom stayed with me and my sister here in the States, and my sister had Down syndrome. She's two years older than me, so it was really just me, my mom, and my sister. And I had to do a lot. Of, I had to step up and, quote, unquote, be the man at the house to so help my mom out with my sister because she had a lot of things she couldn't do. So I was finding ways to use food to take that emotional gap I had, so emotional eating, stress eating. And my mom was someone who we can now call as an almond mom. So an almond mom is someone that just takes any diet fad and pushes it on everyone. I just found out this word the other day. I had no clue until recently. So my mom would do Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, low carb, low fat, just anything that would pop up at the time. And one of the things I remember, there's those big canisters of cheese balls. I used to take that and I'd have that in my room because my mom says we couldn't have it out. And I'd have to eat it alone in my room so that no one would see me and so she wouldn't see it. So that's where Mm. my food challenge started. And then I had something called body dysmorphia where I didn't feel at home in my body. Well, at 13 years old, uh, depression hit. I was overweight. I was uh, around 250 pounds at 13 years old. And I went to go see a urologist with my mother. And they did blood work. Everything came back normal. And what they saw, Eric, was that I had something called gynecomastia, which if we break it down, that's man boobs. That's all it really is. Mm-hmm. And it's because I was overweight. It was the food I was putting in my body. I just wasn't happy. And it really did have an effect on my mental status as well. So not only how I outwardly look, but inwardly as well. Well, all throughout middle school and high school, I was yo-yoing. I didn't really, you know, hit in puberty, didn't know what was going on. And that urologist said I had two options at 13 years old, Eric. It was either testosterone replacement therapy or plastic surgery. I took neither of those options, which is crazy. At 13 years old, what? How is this the only options that I was given over 20 years ago? And if now I can't even imagine what they're offering, if it's not talking to a professional to talk about what's going on, Eric, right? We go down a whole rabbit hole there, but... Uh, to keep keep it back in the nutrition space. So uh, I was an offensive lineman in football. So the really big guys, I played football. I was also in the band because I was just overweight. I didn't know what I, I wasn't very athletic. And it wasn't until the end of high school, my senior year, where a friend of mine gave me a bodybuilding meal plan and a bodybuilding uh, workout plan. And I lost the weight. Eric, I felt great. I had confidence. I actually mm. stared at myself in the mirror because at that time, uh, a lot of the, the buff guys were moving their boobs on, and that's what they could do, move their pecs, right? Just move them up and down, show their muscles. I'd stare in the mirror until one day it finally moved. And I was like, finally, I could conquer the one thing people would make fun of me about. Well, mm. I went to college, Eric, and all that went out the window. Uh, I decided that pizza, beer, and tacos tasted way better than any meal plan I was on. So I gained all the weight back. I got up to 252. I remember looking down at the scale. It was 252, 253, and I was like, what am I doing? So I tried every diet at the time, and I tried to find that meal plan again. It was a lot of Atkins, a lot of South Beach diet. I even tried fat burners. I tried every kind of supplement that was out there to figure out what was going on, Mm. and none of it worked. So I finished my degrees in college with biology and chemistry. I took a year off, and it was a Halloween night. I went dancing, and I broke my foot dancing because I was eating 1,500 calories a day and doing two workouts a day. And I was under fueling or not giving myself enough calories. And I just wasn't Mm. happy. I was preoccupied with the way I look. I was isolating myself because I wouldn't go out with my friends to eat because I didn't want to eat chicken wings because I thought it was going to make me fat. I wouldn't eat pizza with them. I'd bring meals with me. I was really isolating versus enjoying the moment and being with my friends and not worried so much because my friends loved me for who I was. They didn't care Mm. what my body looked like. Right. I was the, the guy over summer when I'd go out with them to the beach, I'd wear a shirt because I didn't want people to see what was under there because I was just so scared and I I thought people would judge me for that. Well, after I broke my leg, the first thought that went through my head, Eric, was how am I going to work out? And I knew right in that moment that something wasn't right. Something wasn't right. I went to an open house with my wife and they had a degree in nutrition. And as as we were just talking about moments ago, I thought you could get it, just work at a gym and you got a degree in nutrition. So I sat Mm -hmm. for my first nutrition class, Eric, and I loved it. I knew that's exactly where I wanted to be educating people on how what they eat fuels them for what they do. Mm -hmm. Well, I did my internship, as mentioned earlier, and I worked at a hospital. And there was a gentleman who just had open heart surgery, Eric. And I come in and I walk in and the gentleman says, are you the food guy? And I say, yeah, I guess you could call me that. I am the food guy. All right, great. And he's like, can you get me freaking mac and cheese and freaking fried chicken? And I said, excuse me? 
He's like, yeah, can you get me those two things? And I look at him. He literally just had our open heart surgery. He had a tube coming out of his throat or throat out of his chest with fluids draining out of it because he just had surgery. I was like, sure, you just had open heart surgery. I'm here to talk to you about your diet because the choices you're making are putting you in here. And he's like, well, I have a new heart. So who cares what I eat? Can you get me the freaking fried chicken or the mac and cheese? And in that moment, Eric, I knew that's not where I wanted to be at. Mm. I knew that's not the person yeah. I wanted to help move forward, right? A lot of people are going for what is the Band-Aid, not what is the root cause of the solution. So from there, I went to go work at the University of Florida, as you mentioned earlier, with their athletes. Why? Because I want to know how come these athletes are performing at peak performance, look the way they do, and eat foods that I never thought we should eat, such as carbs, such as dairy products. These things that we hear today, we should stay away from, but they're promoting them. So what's the secret behind it? I was like, are they... Are they doing some sort of steroids in the background? Are they doing some sort of supplement that I'm not aware of? Mm -hmm. It was none of that, Eric. I had a great relationship with food, and they used food to fuel their body for what they were doing. Right. And then I went to go work because some of these some of these young athletes were in the Olympics. And I was like, whoa, this is awesome. What are they taking? What are they eating? And again, it was literally using food as their fuel source. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to go work in professional baseball, it was taking it to that next level of people being Hall of Famers, trying to make it in their careers. And it was a dream that so many people wanted to achieve. And as you, you speak so much on, I wasn't happy because I was working countless hours and I wasn't able to really fuel my own self with purpose from food wise. I was able to fuel these athletes to be their best. But again, I started to go down that weight gain track again because I just wasn't happy where I was and I was using that food as a crutch. Well, right. Eventually, I started my own business, my own practice, which I've been doing now for close to five years. And I've been educating so many entrepreneurs, small business owners to eat and to train like athletes. When I say train, I don't give them the training plans, but I tell them how to fuel what they're doing. So people who are mm -hmm. investing in themselves, right? Just like these athletes want to perform at their best. Yeah. How much brain fog can someone that's listening to the show eliminate? How much less stress can they do or have based on what they're eating or how much sleep they're getting? So that led mm -hmm. me to where I am today because I had those same struggles. I was stressed out. I had the extra a uh, freshman 15, quote unquote, but when we're starting a business, I think that should be another freshman 15 that we're adding on because yes. we tend to put our wealth for our health. And then when we finally get to the health, we don't have the happiness that we've always wanted to achieve because we put so many other things as priorities versus actually taking into account what our bodies are actually doing and taking mm -hmm. on. Yeah. I love the phrase they're putting their wealth before their health. And the, the problem in placing your money and your value, your literally the currency in your pocket versus the currency within your soul. And when you do that, you're living like, you know, a 500 pound person where all your weights on your shoulders and you have nothing supporting the, the bottom of it and you just tip over. And when people place the emphasis on the things they can have and buy and do before, can I enjoy the things that I want to buy and have and do you're living out of alignment.